Man, I feel like Hawkeye right now. Don't give me hope. Stop that. Stop giving me hope only to take it all away from me and just leave me with disappointment in a game where I was thinking the entire first 40 minutes, yeah, they're going to lose in regulation. I got to start thinking about things to talk about. I got to start thinking about, okay, what are the other angles that we can analyze when it comes to this game? Because I'll tell you right here, whenever there's a game that is as boring as the first 40 minutes of that game right there, Vancouver, Vegas, on Sunday, April 3rd, Autism Awareness Night, or excuse me, Autism Acceptance Night, my mistake, I was kind of saying, you know, like, the game was bad, I don't want to go out there and start analyzing every individual chance and goal that's scored by Vegas because that's just going to get old and a lot of people are like, yeah, you know, I already watched the game, Lego, I don't want to listen to you talking about that game because that game pissed me off. The last thing I want is even more extended analysis on that game. And then the third period happened, and they gave us reasons to cheer for them. They gave us a lot of reasons to go, ooh, and ah, in Rogers Arena. I was feeling really bad, because I had a few friends that went to this game. Obviously, you know, it's a Sunday afternoon, right? Especially 4 p.m. game, competing with WrestleMania, and I believe the Grammys are on tonight, something like that. So it's a very strange scheduling time for the NHL. But... I was feeling bad for a lot of my friends. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry for the loss of your money because you went to Rogers Arena and you watched this travesty of a game and then the third period happened. They gave us hope and then they took it all away in overtime once again. The Vegas Golden Knights have defeated the Vancouver Canucks in part one of a home and home. Yes, it is a home and home. The next game on Wednesday is going to be in Vegas and the score is three to two. It's a straight-up game, you know, 3-2 games, they happen all the time. It's a very standard, stereotypical hockey score. But the Vancouver Canucks only really gave us something to cheer about for, like, the last 20 minutes of the game. 20 minutes and a bit, I guess, because there was an overtime period in there as well. But the first two periods of this game for Vancouver were just so... So piss poor, and I think a lot of Canucks fans watching this season are just so used to the first period, at the very least, being terrible. Their second periods historically have been pretty okay this season, but like, the first periods is where the Vancouver Canucks lose their hockey games, and this one seemed like it would have been no different. The Canucks just could not control the play. Sure, they had some momentum, they killed off a penalty in the first five minutes, but like, it's Alex Petrangelo who scores right away in the opening draw, it's off a face-off, Chandler Stevenson plays it over to Eichel, who sends it across to Petrangelo, who goes over to the side, he shoots it, he scores it at a tight angle, Demko got some of it, but it went up and in, and then a few minutes later, you had yourselves Jonathan Marcheseau, who picks the puck off off of a, what was it, a Tucker Pullman turnover? I completely forgot. By the way, Tucker Pullman was back, but then he left the game again because he got injured. Unfortunate for him. But Marcheseau comes right down Main Street. He shoots it. He scores it. It's 2 nothing in the first period. There aren't really too many things to cheer about for Vancouver, aside from John Shorthouse making a push and pee reference, which was very funny to me. There were a few chances the Canucks had towards the end of the first period. There was a Tanner Pearson opportunity where he threw it in front for JT Miller. He was all alone and was saved by Robin Lehner. And then Bo Horvat had a shorthanded breakaway on an Elias Pettersson four-minute double minor for high-sticking Shea Theodore and causing him to bleed. The Bo Horvat breakaway was stopped by the five-hole of Lehner and the first period ended off with the Canucks still shorthanded. And then the second period started off, and things were really bad. Matthias Janmark gets a breakaway 20 seconds in, stopped by Thatcher Demko. The penalty gets killed off, though, so the Canucks actually doing pretty solid with their PK opportunities. They then get a power play chance later on, too. And even though it looks good, they've got some good looks with their rebounds and opportunities in front. The Vegas Golden Knights ultimately kill this one off. We then had ourselves an injury scare as Elias Pettersson hit Ben Hutton right in front of the penalty box. Brock Besser got his arm stuck in the midst of that sequence, and he left the bench with his arm drooping down. It looked really bad from the video angle that they had on the broadcast. But either way, Brock Besser returns in the third period, so all good, no harm, no foul. But at the end of the second period, I was really feeling that sense of dread, you know? John Shorthouse said it on the broadcast that it's a dreary day in Vancouver, and there's also that sort of overarching cloud of droopiness just kind of levitating inside the building for all those who are watching. 
And you know what they always say in hockey, right? The cliches when you're down by two, you're down whatever. When you're starting off a new period, it's always, okay, let's get an early one. We got to get one right away. And that's what they did right away. It's OEL from the point who throws one towards the goal. It's blocked in front. Martinez, I believe it is, was right there to play it out. But instead of playing it out, he plays it right back onto the stick of OEL, who instead of shooting a second time, then sends it into the middle for Miller, who shoots it, and he scores it Bo Horvat style. We need those JT Miller points. Any game where the Canucks get Miller a point or two, is a win in my books, as JT Miller is now at 82 points on the gosh darn year. Is that 29 goals? Is the guy at 29? He's one away from becoming the first Canucks 30 goal scorer since Radim Verbata. Yeah, I'm not going to let that one go. That is so... Ah, man, it's such a strange statistic to me that Radim Verbata was the last 30 goal guy. That Miller being one away from tying him is music to my ears. It's been seven years since we have seen a 30-goal guy, and Miller is one away from that right here. The game gets exciting immediately after this goal as well. You have some really good chances from Pod Colson. He's been rushing the puck and hitting guys all night long. I will give credit where credit is due. Even though the Canucks looked pretty lackadaisical and sloppy for the first 40 minutes, Pod Colson was still there, and he was doing his thing. Get this guy better line mates than Nick Patan and Alex Chase on, dude. He absolutely deserves it. Miller gets tripped up. There's a penalty to Jonathan Marcheseau, and the Canucks, they look good on the power play too, but Robin Lehner is even better. The first unit actually takes a minute and 40 before they get off on a change, but right as this penalty expires with two seconds to go, it's Braden McNabb who throws it over the glass in his own end. There's two seconds of five-on-three hockey right here. The Canucks take a timeout to rest their top unit, and then the Vegas Golden Knights score in their own net. Carlson wins the draw, but Martinez is right there, and he tips it in five-hole on his own goalie. An own goal there by the Vegas Golden Knights, and the building is ballistic. Everybody's cheering their heads off. There's just so much excitement that was not there like half an hour ago once this goal goes in. Everybody is hyped up. Holy crap, the Canucks are back in this game. It's a tie game, 2-2. They've actually started getting some pressure on... And this is what I'm talking about, man. This is the emotion that I'm describing. I hate feeling when I know it doesn't pay off in the end. Hi, hi, hi. They look good, and they tie it up 2-2. Sure, it's the luckiest goal of Bo Horvat's career. He doesn't even really touch the puck at all. It just goes right in because of Alec Martinez. But either way, the Canucks have scored a power play goal, and unfortunately for them, it was a 5-on-4 power play goal because it was apparently two seconds between the puck drop and the actual goal itself. So even though the goal was not quick enough to still be accomplished on the 5-on-3, thus leaving the Canucks on the power play still, hey, I'll take a tie game in this kind of circumstance with this sort of momentum any day. You have yourselves Quinn Hughes breaking a few ankles, a little shift around the Canucks blue line that causes William Carlson to fall down. That was really funny. Myers is the one that gets the biggest play right in front in the last second of the third period. He gets a centering feed. He's by himself with Lehner, and the guy shoots it high and wide. It's way wide, too. He's like two meters from the net. Myers, man, you can't be missing those. At least get it on goal. Now, to be fair... I guess you could say, oh, he didn't really realize that it was like the very last second. He had some time. Like, after the shot went wide, it hit the end glass, and then the horn sounded, so maybe there was a little bit of time to collect himself, but still, Myers gets a point-blank chance right in front in the last second of the game, and he doesn't even get a shot on. Now, once overtime comes around, I kind of say to myself, you know, this has been a great game. Like, this has been a fun game, entertaining game. Sure, the last 20 minutes really made up for the first 40, and the first 40 were not really all too watchable in isolation. But I don't know how much I believe in this Canucks team to get it done in overtime. Like, they've been so bad in OT the past month and a bit, two months maybe even, that if they actually score, I'm going to be surprised. Bo Horvat gets himself a breakaway right at the start of overtime, but he gets a little bit in too deep. It was a good play by Lehner, a good play by Martinez to shut it down as well. And then we started to see some more of the regular Canucks-isms in the overtime period too. JT Miller takes the puck into the offensive zone. He tries a little through the legs, fancy dangle there. And it causes a turnover. It's a two-on-one where Hughes is the last guy back, and Jack Eichel gets an opportunity to come right down the left side. Granted, he gets stopped by Demko, but still, Miller, you can't be turning it over like that. 
Then we have Bo Horvat doing the same thing. He tries the similar move in the offensive zone as well. The puck gets deflected into the corner. Elias Pettersson is on the wrong side of the puck. He's behind the guy trying to force it away. Bo Horvat comes into pinch and the Golden Knights get another odd man rush. And eventually it's a cross crease over to Theodore where he takes a little bit of a second before throwing it towards the goal and by Thatcher Demko. Like, Bo Horvat back check there. He had an opportunity to swap the puck away from Theodore before he took the shot, but he didn't. He just couldn't. And the rest of the Canucks, you could see the body language on the ice. Oh man, they did it again. They did it again. Another odd man rush against in overtime. I'm sorry, Thatcher Demko has been great in some of the saves that he has had, but you can't expect him to do that 100% of the time. The Vancouver Canucks lose in a game that ultimately had like 20 fun minutes for Canucks fans. The rest of the time, the last parts of the OT, the first 40 minutes, the first two periods really not worth it. Like, you can go out there and try to watch as much as you want about this game, analyze the intricate details, but like, if you're a Canucks fan just looking for some entertaining hockey, stick with that third period. And if you're the Canucks, please, try to do more of that third period stuff. What happens with this team at the beginning of the games? Why can't they start on time? Sheesh. Let me know in the comments all your thoughts about this one. The Vancouver Canucks have lost, what is that, their third straight in a row? Fourth straight? Something like that. I don't really care. I'm on, uh, Team, let's get JT Miller to 100 points this season anyway. I hope you enjoyed this British Rose Roll 9 And, bye. <laughs>